Oh, I mean, there's just so much to be excited about. I mean, you kind of laid it out. I, I mean, to me, the biggest thing is can I the, the biggest freshman is I mean, Deuce Robinson's look great, but Zachariah Branch to me uh, really is, I think, a centerpiece of this USC season. And he's a centerpiece because, you know, if he can develop and let's remember, USC is off on Saturday, September 16th. So. Like there's going to be just a lot of time for Zachariah Branch to just to be on the practice field and soak up knowledge, learn at, you know, in this first half of the season. And I said this to Mark Rogers last week, and then it's worth repeating this week. And I'm probably going to repeat it on future Monday shows here at USC Trojans Live. If Zachariah Branch in his learning curve can develop, if that, if that learning curve can accelerate such that, by the Notre Dame game, he can be an elite, true wide receiver one, wide receiver number one, who takes the top off defenses and who has you know the speed to totally change the dynamics in an opposing secondary. If Zachariah Branch can be ready to be the big dog in that wide receiver room by the Notre Dame game on October 14th, so he has you know almost a month and a half uh, in which he can grow and develop into that kind of player. If he can learn quickly enough to, to be that guy, to be the dude in the wide receiver room by mid-October, that's a game changer. And, it, and it's because, and this is a, I'd say a modest point of concern, not huge, but modest, because the receivers are doing their jobs and, and, and there are a lot of weapons to go to as we, as we keep seeing every week, whether it is Deuce Robinson or Taj Washington, uh, or Brent, Brendan Rice, um, or Mario Williams, you know, lots of options. But, like, we haven't seen the Jordan Addison replacement. We have not seen someone play at the Jordan Addison standard from last season with the speed that just totally distorts an opposing secondary. But Zachariah Branch has the potential to be that guy. He has the potential to truly be – the Jordan Addison replacement. I went into this season thinking that Dorian Singer would be the Jordan Addison replacement, the guy with the skill level that could you know provide performance and can can shape the field on the same scale that Jordan Addison did. I don't think we've seen that through two games, but I see the potential of Zachariah Branch to be able to do that. So if he can really get up to speed, <laughs> word choice intended. By the Notre Dame game, that is a profound game changer for the USC offense if it happens. Sorry, my bad. Uh, yeah. No, no, sorry, no doubt about that. I'm sorry, I've been having my wires pretty much messed up over here. Um, it, there's flipping over the defense side of the ball is it's uh, no question why we we saw the staff so high and excited about Elijah Hughes uh, from the East Coast. Brought him over here. Uh, he just that the, the guy gets off the ball so quickly, so strong, so powerful, uh, and it's a backfield. He's been a disruptor, but it was nice also to see Braylon Shelby really shine today. Uh, this guy is massive. If you if you're watching. You know, the, he he won the the all get off the bus uh, uh trophy uh, getting off the bus trophy. This guy is massive. He's huge. But not only that, he's got length. He's speed. He's got bend. He gets he gets to the quarterback, and he got that strip sack that was was uh, that actually actually popped that ball up in the air, and yet Stanley grab it and house it. So that was really nice to see. Uh, but again, in that game, we're seeing like a true scrimmage as it was. It's almost like a spring game, Matt. We've had three spring games this year. And we got to see these freshmen really show out, right? That's usually res re reserved for the, the spring game. That's why people go to the spring game. You know, it's going to be vanilla, but you get to see those young guys shine. And, I mean, th these freshmen would be starting all the way across the country, without a doubt. All these guys were naming. So it's it's great to see them play. And then I'm not even talking about Makai Lemon. He catch he caught that ball on that kickoff, and he, he tried to stretch it out. He showed off that speed that everyone's been talking about in practice. So a re really a great game. Uh, not you can't take much from it, obviously, but they did what they're supposed to do. They they held him under 50 yards rushing. They shut him down. Only five first down. Uh, I think on third down there were five of 16. They're doing exactly what you said. They're not getting the turnovers, but they are getting the guys off three and outs, like you said, and and getting the ball back into the offense, which is their job.
And, and, and let's be real, like as wonderful as it was to have all those takeaways in the first half of the 2022 season, like all of us, you, myself, Tony Altamore, Rick and Naya, like we all worried what happens when that turnover faucet, you know, gets shut off and the, and the defense has to get three and outs and just get off the field without benefit of a turnover. What then? I'm loving this. I, I like do, do I want interceptions, takeaways in big moments like Corey Foreman against UCLA? Of course I do. No one wouldn't want it. No one's going to turn that down. But uh, it, it, USC, this defense needs to be a defense which can prove that it can get off the field without the benefit of a turnover. I mean, and you know, like there are so many good uh, quarterbacks and offenses that USC is going to meet in the Pac-12. Also, Notre Dame with Sam Hartman, as you alluded to. Got to be able to get off the field on third and eight without, you know, getting an interception. You have to be able to just get that defensive stop. So liking that trend very much. Opposing teams, third down conversion percentage, uh, not very good for, for, for the opponents. Great for USC's defense. That's a very encouraging trend early on. As a huge function of that pass rush. We, I, we talked about the young guys with Shelby and with, uh, with Elijah Hughes. But remember, we got Jamil Muhammad absolutely just, Crushing it uh, as well. Uh, then you He's got the Solomon best Bird on the team, I would say. Yeah, it was, and so well, Solomon Bird was there. He was the whole. I was watching the line the whole day. He was a step behind. There was one time where he could have got that sack, um, but you know, Brandon Lewis got just back to the past the line of scrimmage. Uh, so he, you know, a, the, the function, the reason why they're doing so well on third down as opposed to last year is is that is that pass rush is bare right up the middle. Because when you think about it. Think about when USC's pass rush, right? Think about when USC's defense had been solid. You had like a Sean Cody, um, a Seth Ellis, uh, a big Mike Patterson, a Leonard, you know, Big Cat Williams, Stevie T, uh, Antoine Woods, right? Those kind of guys, they could do two things. One, they, they collapse that pocket. They're space eaters on one place, so they get double teams, allow the linebackers to get there and get fill those gaps and, and make the play. And, and again, it's going to all start up. We all know in football, it starts up front. And our offensive line, our defensive line is looking really good. I'm wondering where LFG is. He kept giving me a hard time telling me how bad our offensive line was going to be. But uh, again, is this according to, uh, to PFF? But according to PFF, you know, our, our O-line is 11th in the country in pass blocking as a unit and number 15 in run blocking as a unit. 